We're now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of Hedgesville football, Matt Faircloth. Coach Faircloth, your team falls 66 nothing to Martinsburg last week. Just give us uh, your thoughts on the game. I mean, I thought, you know, early in the first quarter there, you know, we were executing the game plan to pretty much how we wanted to, to get things accomplished in the run game as far as we wanted to play them on defense. Um, but, you know, second quarter, it sort of, you know, went awry and, you know, we sort of got out of the game plan and, and, and trying to – guys were trying to do a little too much. But at the end of the day, they're a really good football team. They execute at a high level. And when you play teams like that, you you can't – really give them the little details because then it turns into, you know, big games, big plays, and that's eventually what happened to us. You mentioned some of the, the little things not going right for your team. What uh, specifically did you see? I mean, uh, the, the big one is just making sure we're, you know, aligning right, making sure we're getting the coverages we need to get to when they motion or when they were stationary. And, you know, we went over things all week, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we never know what you're going to get with 15, 16, 17-year-old kids. You know, one quarter it can be high execution and the next quarter it not be. And you know, that, that's what it boiled down to, you know, not running our feet on tackles, not, you know, not hitting the right gap when we needed to, it was, you know, not scooping to the right right gap when, you know, they're blitzing and, and, protect, and protecting inside out. So it was just a lot of little things. It's a big loss for your team, but it's only one loss, and it's against Martinsburg. So how do you make sure that your team's still focused for the rest of the season to get the job done? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we told them yesterday after we watched film and, and we were done with it, it was, you know, you got to flush it, you got to move on, you got to you got to get back in the grind and, and start working towards Washington for Friday night. And, you know, I think we did that. Uh, we watched a lot of film corrected a lot of things and, and a lot of guys, you know, held themselves accountable to some stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you got to get back on the grind because if you don't get back on the grind and you let this soak in, it, it'll just go downhill from here. So I think for us, energy was upbeat yesterday and, you know, we're getting ready to go outside here in 45 minutes. So uh, I think we'll be high energy again today. Coach, uh, you mentioned it, Washington coming up this week. What are some things that stand out to you about them? You know, they got some really, really good young athletes, guys that can run and catch. Um, uh, O-line has good size up front. They really get after it. Uh, quarterback, they I mean, they got two quarterbacks. You got, you got the one, you know, it looks like he's 6'5", 6'6". Uh, they can really sling it. And then uh, the other kid that came in the other night, you know, he was running all over the place and, and eventually got them the drive to win the game. Uh, he made some big throws with his arm. So, you know, and, and they get after you on defense. They're they're blitzing. They're bringing seven, six, seven at a time. So for us, it's you know, it, it could be it could be a problem for us if we don't clean things up. And coach, a home game finally. I'm trying to figure out the best <laughs> way I want to say it. Um, it's something that you guys haven't had in a very very long time uh, due to the things that went down last year how excited is the team and yourself just to finally get to a home game and be in front of that community once again i mean i say it all the time you know playing at moomaw stadium uh it's uh it, it's it's a very unique atmosphere because the community it's it's so enriched into what we're trying to do and it's loud it's you know a lot of energy is always in the stadium for us you know 13 months you know, it's been 13 months since we've uh, played in front of our home crowd um, and, and playing, you know, not, uh, eight road games uh, in a row last year. Uh, and then you start your your first three on the road this year. It's been a it's been a long journey, uh, yeah, a lot of adversity. But at the end of the day, our kids have handled it well. Uh, you know, they've answered the the call every time. School wins. We eat. We get our stuff together. We get on the bus. We travel. So I mean, they, they've been in that role for 13 months and now they finally get the school wins they get to relax we get to eat we get to take our time getting getting out on the field so you know i think that's going to be a big adjustment for us because we haven't done it in so long and also anytime a program adds a turf field it seems to bring a lot of excitement to the program as well so getting to play on the turf what are some of the things that you like about having that now in your home stadium 
Well, I tell you right now, I mean, I'm I'm sitting outside looking at it. When it rains, we can still practice. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's it's always good for those things. And you know, the, the field it, it has brought a lot of excitement back to back to the program and the community because you know, for so long, everybody around you had it. Uh, besides us and Muslim, when everybody had it, and uh, you know, now we don't really we don't have to move games if we get torrential downpours with our JV and freshmen. Um, we can still play at home. So I mean it's it's a it's a luxury, uh, like we were just talking about it five minutes ago. Like now we get to actually go out in the rain and have a a solid practice and not worry about a you know a mud bowl in the middle of practice. We kind of touched on it earlier, but back to focusing in on Washington, your opponent this week. What else stands out to you uh, about them? I mean they they're they're big play capable. Uh, you know you watching them on film, and, you know they're slinging that. They're slinging the ball all around the all around stadiums, uh, um, and they got two backs that can really go. Um, you know, and it, like I said, that they're young athletes out on the perimeter. Uh, really run, they run really good routes. They get open. They create space. Um, and defensively, like I said, I mean, pressure, pressure, pressure. And I think you know that's what they've established. You know, in the first three or four games of the year is. You know they're coming. They're coming after you. They're not going to let you get comfortable in what you're trying to do. Um, so for us, it's you know getting back to the basics and making sure we understand that you know we got to protect inside gaps. We got to if we're running outside, we got to protect outside gaps and keep everybody healthy. And and we're going to have to go make big plays. And it looks like it's you know calling for for rain. So you know rain games. You never know how it's going to go. And Coach Washington Hedgesville have built a nice rivalry over the last few years. Obviously, every EPAC game is a rivalry, but both teams playing well, and these teams match up pretty well, and they usually have similar styles. So, what does that add to the matchup this week? I mean, especially there for you know a lot of years we were playing game one on Thursday night, and I always thought that was a really good uh, atmosphere, and it was really good to get our kids at the focal point before the season kicked off and. But we had to move some things, and, and now we play in the middle of the year. But I don't think anything changes just for the simple fact that, you know, our kids are going to play really hard against each other just because at the end of the day, right now in the EPAC, it's – I mean, if you look at if you look at the rankings, you know, what, we got four or five teams sitting in the top 11, 12. It's it, – any given night, you're not going out against any, any, any cupcakes. And it's one of those things, if you don't bring your A game and you don't come out ready to go, you're going to get smacked in the mouth, and before you know it, it's too late. What are the changes that need to be made from last week going into this week uh, that will hopefully ultimately lead you guys uh, to a win again? It's the little things, making sure we stay locked in, making sure we understand where we're supposed to be, alignment assignment coverage-wise, um, and, and not letting the moment be too big. Uh, I think last week uh, we we allowed the moment to be too big for us and you know got caught up in all the – you know where we were ranked and where this was that and it, that that stuff. It, it only matters where you're ranked at the end, and you know that's. I think that was new for our kids, uh, and so a lot of it is is just getting back to to what we do and, and stop worrying about everything outside of you know the game itself. All right, coach. We'll get to the uh, the fun question this week. So, um, if you were stranded on a deserted island, but you had all the essentials like food and water and, and clothes and that stuff, what would be the one item you'd want to bring with you? Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna need huddle. I'm gonna have to watch film, so I'm gonna have to bring at least a a phone or a, a MacBook so I can watch film. Good answer. Yeah. All right, coach. Thank you for the time. All right, I appreciate it, folks.